Okay, so this is my Motorola lap dock. I've already done one video kind of explaining a bit about it and showing some operating systems running on it. But this video is a bit different because uh, this isn't plugged in. Uh, so I'm running Raspberry Pi OS and uh, it's the 32-bit version. And if I spin it around, you'll see that it's actually not plugged into the mains. It is completely self-sufficient. Uh, the lap dock has a battery in it. Uh, and it's powering the Pi from the USB out. So this is a USB-A socket here. There's a USB-A socket here. There's another USB socket, which I'm gonna plug a mouse into in a minute because I think that one still works, is still usable. Uh, I've got my HDMI cable going into the lap dock at the back. So if I spin it around this way a little bit, you'll see that there's actually a micro HDMI connection, which is going to uh, USB-C, and then USB-C is converted to A, and then I've got a USB-A coupler, then I've got a USB-A to micro USB cable, and then I've got a micro USB to USB-A adapter. Nice and simple. Obviously this could be a lot neater. Um, it certainly could be much, much better, and I could affix the Pi on the back. I had put this, uh, this was my uh, ice tower cooler case. And because it's got rubber feet on it, I, I was gonna hang it from the back of the laptop. But with this cable configuration, and there, some of the cables are a bit thick and not that bendy, I, I have to make do at the moment. But I'm just really pleased that it's working as is. So if I, let's just move that back a bit. So you can see the mouse pointer works. Uh, if I tap on Firefox, there you go. You don't have to hard click, you can, you can lightly tap. The way this is achieved is by undervolting, and Salvador from Pi Labs let me know about this, but also Amir from the Windows Discord keeps saying about undervolting and, and how his Pi goes to, I think it's something like minus 16 he can get it to. Uh, and obviously it runs incredibly cool when you're undervolting, but you need to also change the CPU and uh, maybe not have GPU overclocking at all to be able to achieve that. So I'll go through my settings in a minute. So let's just show that it's working. Let's go a bit closer in because you can see that you can see that it's working. It's working on its own. So if we go to the PSP video Stadia, I'll have some Xbox Series S videos when it uh, when it arrives. Uh, so if I go for yeah, this one is screen captured. So it has sound, certainly not the best sound. Uh, it could be a lot better. And I can turn it up using the volume keys on here. Okay, so I wanted to show uh, one of the reasons why I really like it. Let's just scrub stay. into the video a bit. So I can pause. So I can press space to pause. I can press, say, three to go 30% into the video, four to go 40% in the video. Uh, I've got brightness control here as well and if I pull back and press the battery button you can see that I've got five lights lit up so the battery is fully charged at the moment I don't know how long it lasts uh, in this mode with this underclocking but uh, but it hasn't it hasn't moved yet and I've had it I've left it on for quite a while actually because I, I went out the room and I was doing other things so let's see I usually do screen capture, but this is more tricky to do screen capture like this. Actually, so one thing I was gonna do is try and plug in a mouse into this because it works a bit like a USB hub, I believe. Let's have a look. Yeah, so I have, I have mouse control. That makes it easier for this bit. So I can at least move that right in and let's close that down. Call up a terminal. And so NeoFetch will tell me the clock speed I'm running at. So it's running at one gigahertz at the moment. Uh, and it's been running for 22 minutes. Uh, and then if I do sudo nano boot config dot text, this will show you the settings I'm using. So over voltage equals minus four and arm frequency equals a thousand. Now I need to play around with it. I probably can go higher on the arm frequency uh, and I'm not sure how much difference I can change the over voltage to, uh, but I just I was excited that it was up and running and uh, 
it's it's all self-sufficient so I'm going to play around with it I might do another video on it uh, or write in the description sort of what levels I went to um, but uh, yeah after all the overclocking videos I've done now I'm underclocking uh, so actually what does that mean so if it's running at a thousand what does that mean it runs so if I was to add uh, add CPU front end add so what is it yeah so it's on 666 now that so if I was to start up Firefox I guess it will show up uh, yeah it goes to a thousand so and I did have a comment on one of my overclocking videos about how you can set a minimum frequency and a maximum frequency and I mean it's amazing how many differences you can make but it actually works fine I haven't had an issue with it so if I go to BBC News uh, you can see I can scroll around now I've got the mouse on there uh, I can click on it and then click back <laughs> actually doesn't feel that slow at all considering it's only running at a maximum of a gig and I thought the video performance was all right as well let's close that down so yeah something a little different um, it's uh, this laptop really is cool and uh, it works with lots of other devices as well so unlike some of the Pi laptops around this will work with pretty much anything that plugs into HDMI and then you can use the USB out to give it mouse and keyboard support uh, and you can also separately power you don't have to power the Pi from this but I just thought it was quite cool if I had it on a desk somewhere if I just wanted to flash an SD card or something like that I could easily set this up and have it running in the background uh, it's uh, yeah it's just another way of doing it so I hope this all helps I'll keep playing around with it but uh, thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe